Hi, I'm Christian Guzman, and I approve of the Board Shorts and Banter podcast. He's having a quick pre-pod wee. That's not good enough, mate. I know. Last week we had Kez turning up moments later than us, and now we've got young whippersnapper that's newly on the scene telling us when the podcast starts. Absolutely diabolical. Do you know what it is? What? He's just not all in enough. He's just the tip. That's what I've heard. Just the tip. Anyway, welcome back, people, to another episode of the podcast. Yes, we are starting it now, Josh. Okay. And uh, if you guys want to cop some of the finest garments in the land, Josh, what are you wearing right now? Oh, fit. All in. All in. I'm, I'm eating a yogurt if you're on audio. I'm decked out, mate. If I could wear all in, like, socks and pants and everything, I would. Yeah, I think I would. I might get an all-in tattoo with the way that it's going because my life is all-in. Oh, here he is. Hello, boys. Hello, Bloody hello. Hell, you're loud. I'm loud. He's not. Oh, or Tom's quiet. Tom, can you turn this off? I, I think I'm... Am I quiet? Uh, Josh, we are How one minute into the podcast. We oh. wait for no man. Apologies for the late showing, guys. It's absolutely shocking, mate. I'm joking. Josh, I've, ne- I've never even met Josh before in my entire life. Like, I don't really even know Josh. You've met <laughs> me many times. No. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> How are you? Good to meet you. Love to meet you, sir. Very well. Very well. Well, mate, welcome to the team as well. Yeah. Thank you very much. Let me stand up a little bit. Hey. Oh, come on. Yeah, I feel like we need to start the podcast with just a massive congratulations. Not only for the amazing year that you've had, but you have now signed up for the fastest growing bodybuilding clothing brand in the UK. That is sick. Congratulations, mate. Thank you. I'm you, excited. Very excited. You you may be Mr. Olympia, right? But we beat you to the all-in sponsorship. So we're, we're the real winners, you know? That's all that matters. That's, yeah, yeah. Who was here first? We <laughs> were. We pissed all over all in. It's ours. But no, anyway, so if the viewers want to get themselves 15% off, what code can they use, Josh? Oh, they'll use Josh C. Not not BSB15. They'll use Josh C. Do you know what, mate? Because you're so cute, we'll allow it. You can be this week's <laughs> code on the podcast. Thank you very much. <laughs> but uh, anyway, Josh, for any viewers who don't know you, give us a good little introduction to yourself. Right, I'll try my best. So, my name is Josh Campbell. Um, I'm the biggest Josh C on this podcast in the moment. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, no, I weigh 71 kg. The other Josh C is significantly bigger. But, no, um, Josh C Fit on Instagram. I competed. I had my first season, my debut season. I was going to say this year, but it's actually last year, 2023. Um, it went pretty well. So, I done like yeah. the team classes here um i didn't really know what to expect going into it like i thought i was going to be one of those little guys that, that turns up and you're like Haha, look at him <laughs> like I, I was terrified like you know you know the people though that like barely got a tan on nothing and you're like why are they competing um you've seen like reels on it of instagram and stuff like that um, oh like poor guy Fair yeah, play. Like, poor guy <laughs> Me, so I was breaking it. Um but the season ended up going well. I done five shows in the UK. I done one in Romania and then one in Vegas, the um IMB PMB Natural Olympia. So I ended up winning them all. So yeah, it was it was <laughs> good experience. Um but yeah, like I I don't know what else would anything you just want to add that you think I should cover or so I, now go on, on Josh. Go on, Josh. You, you, right. Josh. You speak about Josh. Go on. Okay, okay. I would, I would add on that that you are the most innovative influencer on Instagram over the past twelve months. You have managed to create a trend, a niche. Oh yes. Talk us through it, right? I want to know where you came up with the idea. Why you stuck with it for so long? I went on your Instagram the this morning. Format and- for those. Yeah, age, weeks yeah. out, weight. What the hell? What, what, where'd that come from? It's just like, on because I, I started posting on TikTok in like 2020, 2021. And like, I was so used to seeing like TikToks of like some mad 16 year old and they were just like terrifying. 
But the fact that it said 16, everyone was like, oh my God, he can't be 16. And then people will start arguing in the comments being like, no, he can't be then. They'll just start arguing with each other. So I'm like, right, if I'm going to be pretty lean here, while still holding like a decent amount of muscle mass, if I'm writing that I'm 65 kg, that I'm natural and I'm 18 year old, I'm thinking that might start a little bit of debating in the comments. Um, and then it started and it just kept going and going and going. Some reels would do decent and then some other ones would just like blow up. There's like ones with like a, a good few ones with over a million. Um, yeah. And there's a few of them as well. Like I think, so my Instagram following in 2021, I had what... <laughs> like 500 to a thousand oh then within the God. space of, yeah yeah and like i couldn't get out of it the space of a year could that get out of it like 1600 so i think it grew like 600 followers in the one year and then this year or 2023 sorry last year it went from like 1600 to 22,000. so that's ridiculous thank you and that that there's me right However many years deep into Instagram. Uh, Seven uh, and a half thousand. <laughs> like I remember seeing Finn and Reese. Um and Finn's on like what fourteen thousand ish. I was like, I'll never ever be like that. I was like, I'm gonna be stuck on a thousand forever, but it literally takes like a couple of reels to just go bang. Yeah. Um, but yeah. realistically, like out of all those followers and not not a lot of them are gonna be like real interactive followers. Like a lot of just like foreign kids. Um, they just follow because they see like oh, a striated tricep or like he's lean, but then they like, won't actually interact with my content. Um, like a, a good chunk of it will be, but like a lot of it's just going to be coming from people who are seeing that every once in a while and just like that that type of video. Maybe maybe before right, your your demographic was like thirty percent female, seventy percent male. It's now ninety nine point nine percent like sixteen year old lads and one percent female. Hundred <laughs> percent, million percent. Sorry, lads. Just Josh, why you? Me. Why you get? Is that yeah. a bit? Is that a pint? Yeah, it has to. Oh, it's an alcohol free. It's not even no, worth no, no, calories. No, no. Come on. It's, this is the Erdinger. Shout out to my boys uh, over at Erdinger that sent over loads of beer, and I'm still drinking through it. It's the best non-alcoholic beer on the market. Actually, send you beer. Yeah, yeah. I, no, I asked him for it. I did say to him. <laughs> Do you guys do any collaborations with uh, Z-list influencers or people in the natural bodybuilding space? Because I'm both. And yeah, they're like, no, we don't. But here's nice. some free beer anyway. <laughs> Did they, 100%, they actually sent you that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Swear down. Swear down. I seen the, the protein yogurt as well. What flavor was that? Uh, that, was, that was strawberry, mate, from Lidl. I've recently Lovely. found Lidl. Um, and I'm a big fan. Eddie, what's that guy called that's on TikTok? Eddie. Yeah. 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 Uh, he wouldn't be a fan, but I am. Where, Josh, where do you shop? Like, so uh, I'm assuming when you started your prep, like what was you what was you doing for work? Because are you a full-time online coach now? Do you still have your old job? Like what's going on for you? So, well, I still live with my parents, first of all, so I don't do the shopping. I just put the stuff on the list, um, which is a, a win for me. But job-wise, I worked in Curry's. Um, that was probably, I think I was like averaging 16 to 24 hours a week. So that was like two to three shifts. Um, and like I pretty recently left school, to be honest. Like what was that, 2022? Um, like I was still... I started kind of posting stuff on Instagram and like started pushing coaching, but I realistically wasn't pushing coaching that much. It was just like a post a week and it was like talking about something to do with the gym. Like there was no real stories, no interaction with followers. I was like, yeah, this is going to get me loads of clients. <laughs> and, and like nothing really realistically happened. Like a lot of people, I think, think that they'll do that. Like they'll announce something coach and everyone's like, please coach me. But like, it's not how it works. It is a very slow burner in it. Um, but like I stayed in curries for a year and a half two years so like i think i'd started like at the start of my sixth year so i don't know what you call that um I think it's like your last year of school before you go into like college or uni yeah. i don't know if that's what maybe year 11 um so i started in curries then and like my dream like and my, everything that I was kind of working towards was to try and be just a, a full-time online coach um and that happened june of 2023 so that was what like three months into prep so nice good work mate i yeah. think like you know 
I don't see myself as an older chap, but when you've got young whippersnappers coming through like you, you definitely feel like an older chap. And to see someone <laughs> young like you can almost like break the mold completely. There's not many people your age that are online coaches. There's definitely not many people that are full-time online coaches actually earning some decent wonga from it. Um, it just goes to show like, you know, there's no there's no limits in this game. You can start at whatever age you want. And no, you can make it as big as you want you want it to be. So fair yeah. play to you. I always I always use the excuse of like, oh yeah, I'm young, no one like a little bit older wants me to coach them. But realistically, like if you have the credentials, if you put yourself across well enough on Instagram, like show personality. Like again, like when I was posting like twenty twenty two, it was there was nothing to it. No one knew what I actually was like. I feel like a lot of people don't realise that you actually need to show yourself. Like, especially being young there's going to be literally hundreds, thousands of coaches that have more experience, more credentials, more results than you. The thing that sets you apart most of the time is going to be your personality and how say, likable you are to certain people mm -hmm. and they want to 100%. work with you. And that's going to be what sets you apart from different people. So I feel like that's like massively overlooked in the industry. And, and a lot of people will say to me, like, oh, how do you become an online coach or a successful online coach? And I'm always saying to them, like, that is the biggest thing that people usually just don't think about. Just yeah. be yourself online and show people, exactly. you know. Yeah, I think, I don't know if I've said this before, but like, when you're a PT, how do you get clients? You work the gym floor, you chat to people, you help people out, you show them who you are, what your personality is like. A lot of the time, people work with you because, not because they see you've got this wealth of fucking knowledge, it's just because yeah. he seems like a sound guy that knows how to get in good shape. 100%. And, and if yeah, you like, are being a sound guy that people find relatable online and you are in good shape, you walk the walk, people are more likely to, you know, to work with you, with you rather than posting on your story. I have X amount of spaces open. Um, yeah, yeah. You will receive weekly. Like, no one gives a fuck about what you actually receive. Like, yes, like to a degree, but at the same time, it's like if you can be someone that they can really gel with and they relate with and you know your shit, that's yeah. enough, you know? It's like, and those old posts I would use to try and like make it sound as technical and like so cool as possible talking about eccentrics and why we use resistance bands and stuff. And it's like, no one realistically cares that much. Again, it's more about you as a person, isn't it? You're so, you're so right. You're so right. God damn it! I, w I, w I wish I, I wish I was in Josh's position when I was. How old are you now? Eighteen. Uh, Nineteen though. Oh, 19. No, mate, you're, pa you're past your prime, mate. There it's we not, go. Yeah. It's not impressive anymore, mate. You're nah. past your peak. Who's anymore? I need to write teen, and then they can maybe think I'm eighteen. Oh, mate, wait until you wait until you reach twenty. No one gives a shit about oh, you. Gonna you're gonna be cancelled. Oh, followers. You know. Yeah. I, I, I can't, I can't do those, those reels, right? Where it's like twenty-seven years old, natural, sixty-eight kg. What's, what's impressive about that? Nothing. Wait, why? <laughs> you know. In fact, again, like I remember, like on one of the first podcasts that you were recording, you were talking about being up against like the real, real heavy guys, and you still went in against them being what sixty-eight kg. Mm -hmm. It's like being 68 kg and looking like that's impressive because you'll get all the wee like 14 year olds from some mad foreign country going, I weigh 68 kg and I weigh nothing and I look <laughs> nothing like that. And they all think like, and I'm like, oh, it's not even worth explaining to them. But like, it's always, it's still impressive, 100%. So, but like, what did you, what did you weigh on stage? What was your lowest weighing? Lowest was 64. I think that was my Jesus. second show. Uh, I had like my first show wasn't necessarily like my first planned show. That was just like I didn't really know I was doing it. And Finn and I were like, "Yeah, I'm coming pretty quickly, so let's just run that and kind of see how it goes." Okay, and how much? How much? Uh, throughout your prep, how much weight did you actually have to lose to get into condition? Not a lot. Um, I started at seventy three kg. Lowest was sixty four, so that's nine kg. And then that's not a lot at all. Best look prep probably around sixty five to. 65 and a bit and how lo how long was your prep total oh pretty long i think 32 33 weeks yeah but you were you were doing shows from like five weeks into dieting pretty much so yeah i started what <laughs> march 27th and then first show was july 16th um that was a wmbf first time it was like that was mainly just to kind of see what it felt like and to drop off a lot of like anxiety and nerves around competing because like 
I was breaking it. I was shitting myself. I was like, oh God. And I knew like if my stress was going to be really high for that first kind of proper showing, um, like I would be putting a lot of pressure on myself. So it was like, let me do that to just kind of dip my toes in, you know? I uh, I was obviously, I was sat on the judges table for your first show. Yeah. And um, a little secret about the judging table, or whenever I've been sat on it anyway, you kind mm-hmm. of predict who's going to win. And... You came out, would it have been the first class of the day? Yes, it would have been teens. I'm going to, I'm not chatting shit at all. I had Martin Lamont sat next to me and Zoe Cook. And I said, you came out, I went, he's going to win the overall. And they went, no, he's not. <laughs> have you seen who else is in the novice show? I went, I don't care. He's so good. Your routine was so good. And yeah, you you had my pick from... The first moment that I saw you, because so I just thought it, it, there's something different here. You looked, you looked at least ten years older than everyone else on the stage, which is always a good thing. And yeah, yeah you just looked dead comfortable. I know that you're saying that you were bricking it. You did not look as though you were bricking it one bit. You looked comfortable. You looked confident. It was like you had <coughs> done it so many times before, and you weren't doing a first time a show. I appreciate that because I was shitting myself. Like, obviously, you're very, very nervous. Like, even for you, it's like, if you've got, like, a year or two, like, I'm quite nervous even right now, like, thinking about the next time I compete because it's been so long. But, like, first time, it's just, like, you're on a big stage. And that was, there was it was quite a big venue, to be fair. Like, the stage was and massive. It was, it was packed as well. Like, was, you couldn't have got more people in. Yeah, but then when you stand on stage, like, you can't even see the crowds and that's not because like you're so zoned in or whatever it's just literally the lights are so blinding like they're so so bright that you you cannot see anything in front of you you're just smiling and posing and that's all you can think about doing keeping your quad switched on and just posing i couldn't think about anything else with the people in front of me all i could hear finn screaming at me sometimes quads quads to make sure i was keeping them switched on but like yeah it's a, it's a weird one how did you so obviously like were you nervous up on stage or was it just the build up? Because what I've found is like the, 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 the backstage first few shows is terrifying. Like, you yeah. know, you are bricking it. But what I found is when I got up on there, like I just, whoosh, just like a little wave and like you're in the zone and you're actually yeah. like enjoying it. And I find the anxiety drops down. You're not as nervous. So how did you feel then first time for you? Well, when doing like mandatories and like going through the just the normal posing and stuff, I was fine ish because again, like I could only think about literally like what I'm trying to do with the pose, couldn't yeah. think about anything else. But then it got to the routine, and like, see, because I had that break between being out there and then the routine, like, I was just sat in the line, like, ready to go out for the routines one by one. Um, and I was like sat thinking about everything that I'm doing right now. I was like, oh, oh this is a bit frightening this. And then I went out and like the music was delayed by like half a second and it threw me off so much. I went to like like it wasn't necessarily delayed, but like I thought it was just gonna be like smoother. I went out, it was complete silence, like the whole time I was walking out, because I asked them to play it like once I got to center stage, but I didn't realise how long that like one to one and a half second of me walking from the side of the stage to the center of the stage was gonna feel. And I was like oh no and like the music started i was like i don't know what my first like poses in the in the routine i'd done this every single morning for the past what two months yeah. like every single morning it was like pretty much like second nature just to be able to do it i could do it in my sleep but like i got there and i just like looked out and i was like oh no oh no 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 and i caught the first pose like just in time and i was like i don't know the next one um and it was <laughs> terrifying but eventually i caught it then halfway through the routine bang hits again forget the routine don't know what to do I just start making it up as I go but because sky fall, physique. yeah no honestly just start hitting poses Easy. left yeah. Easy. Like, <laughs> Moon, <moonwalking. laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah I forgot but because sky fall like there's like like a, a big beat every kind of like couple seconds like I would just hit a pose and make sure it landed on the pose and it it worked out somewhat well like a lot of people said that they couldn't really tell that I didn't do it but Finn was like you forgot your pose routine haven't you and I was like yep you're uh, you're clearly like a perfectionist mate like my first competition season right I did I practiced pose and I think like six weeks out like once a week you know like just 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 winging it whereas like you from the very start whether it's like just you and your nature like I want, I want to dig into this a little bit more in a minute but Mm-hmm. 
practicing every single day, like being on it. And like when you're on that stage and because you're such a perfectionist, you can kind of like psych yourself out because you're overthinking. It's like, it needs to be perfect. Yeah, and that can kind of like good. become your detriment almost. 100%. Yeah, it's, it's tough. But it's also like, obviously that came from me practicing a lot, but I had Finn telling me to do that. Like he was like, if you want to really get everything out of this, you need mm-hmm. to... To, to be all in, hey. Hey. <laughs> you, need be, you need to be all in with it. Like, ah. I don't know, Coach Rossi. Um, but no, like making sure that I done everything within my power to actually like be happy with what I was presenting and the whole process itself. I was like, what's the point in it if I'm going to be half arsing it? Like, although it's yes, like I was saying to people, it's going to be massive for just kind of like business and development and everything prepping. I never thought it would be anywhere near what like that actually happened. But mainly, like it was to actually do something that I could be very proud of to nail everything, know that I've nailed everything and kind of reap the rewards of that, whether it was a winner, whether it was me just experiencing today and, and actually just being very proud of what I've put up there. Like yeah. that's that, that that's what people I've had people like inquire for coaching say they want to compete twenty twenty four. Um and they've like got like pretty much no time to be able to do it and everything. They're like, yeah, I just want to win like you won and I was like Oh, oh sh- mate. It's like yeah, it's how frustrating is that? Yeah, I no, can just... understand it though, because like as a young, again, a lot of your demographic is going to be young fucking guys, right? And yeah. they're just like they see you doing it, and like I can, I can do like that. a similar position. I can do that. Like, yeah, fuck. Yeah. This. Do you know, you oh, watch yeah. like Chris Bumstead, and you go to the gym, and you're thinking like Chris Bumstead just doesn't happen, right? It's the same yeah. thing, man. So like, it's a good thing that they've got that drive, but at the same time, it's like you need to be realistic and it sounds like you are being that realistic voice for them at the same time yeah. which is good yeah because like there was a good few of them sorry um there was a good few of them that like i told them straight up that either they needed more time to nail stuff they needed more muscle to actually be able to get into true stage condition they're not in the spot they need to be right now in terms of nailing variables multiple of them just ghosted me or just like okay and they never yeah. messaged me i'm like you're not ready to hear the truth and that it doesn't i think everyone just wants that kind of like instant gratification and wants just everything to pay off so quickly it's like it doesn't happen like that you need to realize that it's a long game and not everything's just going to get just maturity to man it's the maturity so, and obviously you got your head screwed on there's a my first year of competing it was it was okay it wasn't as good as yours but i won my first show so after that, I had like an influx of people wanting online coaching and their goals were, I want to win my first show. I want to do this. I want to do that. And because I didn't see, because I, well, I felt as though it was quite an easy thing. I mm. found myself telling people, yeah, yeah, of course you can. Like, oh, it doesn't matter where you're at because we're, 12 months ago, I was getting pissed pretty much every night at uni. And now <laughs> I've won a bodybuilding show. Like, yeah. Do you do you realize did did you realize at the start of this prep that what you were doing and what you were on to was like, you know, it doesn't happen? Or was there like a moment where you was like, oh shit, this has been a pretty crazy run of events? Yeah, it's hard, isn't it? Like after I won that first one, especially because I won the overall, it was like that was a standard set and anything below that I would have been disappointed with. And I know that was bad to think, but like I remember doing the second show, the BNBF Northern. I won the teens, and I was like, right, that doesn't matter. I'm going for the overall now. So, like, I didn't even think about winning the teens. I was like, right, that is what it is. There was no kind of, like, sense of achievement from that. I was like, overall, then didn't win the overall. And I was just sulking about it. I was like, oh, no. And Finn was like, shut up. It was like, just, (laughs) it literally, it told me straight. It was like, you need to realise that, like, that first show, what you'd done there, that was ridiculous. But you're a teenager. There's going to be people here with like years and years and years of more maturity than you. You need to understand that like you're going to be coming up against people like that. And then that's when I kind of switched the mindset to being like, right, I'm wanting to try and win these teens classes and then give it my best shot at the overall. If it happens, it happens. Um, And then the UK DFB overall, that was the big one. That's when I was like, this is pretty cool. Like I soaked that in. And then I remember one day in the gym, like I was in the middle of training. I think I was like maybe like a week or two out from Olympia. I just it just hit me like a truck like realized what had actually happened because like I'd never really soaked it in because obviously I'd done a lot of shows in a very short period of time so it was like I'd win the show and then I've got another show in a week or two's time so I'm like right head screwed on for that one I'm not thinking about that one and like didn't really have time to soak it in or like I need to do like a lot of work for state coaching and stuff and all the inquiries that were coming through but then like randomly I was just sat I remember I was in the hammer strength incline chest press and like I was just like holy shit 
like what is actually going on here like it was not this because I remember when I was going to start prep and Finn sent over the, the video, it was like, I think we could be challenging for British titles. And like, I put the laptop down, ran into the kitchen, mum and dad were eating dinner. I was like, mum, dad, mum, mum, mum. Thinks, Finn thinks I might be able to win a British championship. And when I'd done it for the first time, like, again, uh, I was like, right, that was good, but next show. And then I just realised that like everything that I pretty much dreamed of and wanted, like both in bodybuilding kind of business, leaving curries, like all just hit me. And I was like, I was sitting trying to like fight back tears in the gym. I was like, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. But I was like, this is really, really cool to actually think about in general, like how far it kind of came within such a short period of time. So, yeah. Oh, man. Thank you. Oh, so sweet. So sweet. This is, <clears throat> the thing is, right, uh, we've spoken about this before, Josh. This is where you can get two different types of like personality. People that get used to winning, they get complacent, they get lazy. Or they recognize that and they can actually use it as fuel to stay on top. Like usually when people get on top, they don't stay there for very long, they fall off. And it's again because they get complacent. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't think that will probably happen with you. I feel like you're like switched on enough and like aware. Like again, like yes, you were disappointed on that. You know, the second time you competed, you didn't take the overall, but it's like you still won your fucking category. You know, and that didn't. You know, those those first few wins didn't kind of slow you down. You didn't kind of get cocky about it. You obviously just kept on pushing. You know, kept stayed hungry for it, and that's what you just need to keep doing from from now on. Because there's gonna be times where you probably will lose. Like you will you will lose. Like you know, it's yeah, I don't I don't yeah. want to like you know. It's like you will you will lose. Tom. You do realise he's not going to lose. Ever. <laughs> imagine. Imagine. Be the fucking be the first person to do that, you know? Madness. Yeah. Never madness. lose a class. Yeah. We'll like, record this, we'll clip this. And then yeah. Of- yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Lost. Hold you, Tom. Hey, yeah, yeah, like jo- yeah. <laughs> Josh has got like millions of followers, right? <laughs> and then someone someone clips this and finds it, and I just get so much hate in like a few years' times. Yeah. You will lose. You will yeah. lose. And I just you'll, you'll it get, get you'll, they'll all come after you and they'll all like report your account to the point that it gets taken <laughs> off Instagram. <laughs> then yeah. you've got to start from zero. My business just crumbles <laughs> I'm on the street. 41, natty, 68 <laughs> kilos. <laughs> And I've competed like fifty more times, and I've never won any of them. <laughs> yeah, oh god, that is right. It's, um, it's Go sim- similar situation for me. It's like obviously Josh. Uh, I was about to say Josh C, Mister Krogan, right? Call me Krogmeister. So, Krogmeister. Um, what's the name? Of, what's the name of the lager you're drinking? Erdinger, alcohol free. Krog Kroginger, right? It's Kroginger. Um, yeah. So. <laughs> Yeah, when you competed, you won your first year. When I competed, my first two seasons, I did second outside of top six. And then that was my first season over. And then second season, I competed against Josh. Um, I did... Krogmeister. I did fourth, and then I did third. So, Mm -hmm. like, I didn't, you know, I obviously placed in, like, two shows, but it was still pretty, wasn't the best, you know? But then for me, I just used that as fuel. I was like, okay, was cool. Just, yeah, keeps you cool. I'm moving up slowly but surely. I'm just not yeah, quite ready yeah. for it. I'll just stay hungry for it and keep working, you know? But like the challenge for you now is, yeah, you've had so much fucking success. You're literally it best in the world, essentially. Miss, like, you know, natural Miss Olympia. It's like, now you've got to like stay hungry for it, you know? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So some people would struggle with. Yeah, 100%. And like once the season finished, like, I was kind of nervous about that and like a little bit anxious and scared. I'm like, after this natural Olympia, what am I going to feel like? Because for the past 32 weeks, I've had like a short term goal of I have a show, I have something to work towards, I've got laser focus. And I'm like, mm-hmm. I'm now going to be taking a two and a half year long off season. So I won't be competing until 2026 now. Um, So coming in as a, a junior, as an older junior, and I'm like, well, I'm going to have two and a half years. I'm not going to have anything to keep me like right on the money. I'm like, what's going to happen? Am I going to feel a little bit lost? Am I going to have like the post prep blues and like, oh, I don't know what to do with myself. Um, But realistically, again, it all comes down to just like thriving to be better and like enjoying the process itself. If someone only wanted to, to train everything to compete, they'd be a bit lost if they've got two and a half years off of competing. But if you actually enjoy the whole process and everything around it, then it doesn't really change much, does it? It's just you're now a little bit fatter and stronger and feel better. So, like, yeah, it's, it's 
so I see it. <laughs> um, the other day, I you may have seen it on Instagram. I went to Mr. Ryan Terry's new gym, RT Fitness. I I thoroughly enjoyed it. Right, it's primal equipment, right? But it's not that bad. Mm. It's not it's not bad at all. It's yeah. just not prime. So people yeah. are obviously going to go, oh, it's not good. No, it's yeah. just different. It's it's fine. But anyway, after I trained, I was very, very lucky to actually be able to sit for like half an hour and talk to Mr. Terry. And yeah, yeah mate, I love the bloke. Me and him, wrong first the- name love terms. Love that. Yeah, I call him daddy. He calls me son. It's does, he follow, does he follow you on Instagram? No. Uh, well, you're not friends there, mate, unfortunately. Yeah. He congratulated me on my world's win and said that I look phenomenal. So that's what I'm going to take to my grave, mate. Has Let's he see. has he reposted right. you on the altar page? Yes, he has many times. He's, I think he's reposted me as well. Once. <laughs> so we're we're, pre- we're, pre- we're, pre- we're, pre- we're pretty much all friends, you know. Well, yeah, we're, we're all related. Anyway, yeah, I've never I've never met him before, but anyway, carry on. Sorry. So. I asked him like how he was after the Olympia and he was like, yeah, yeah, yeah I'm fine. And like, oh, it's, everything's been good. I was like, did you not like get like post-show blues? He was like, honestly, mate, it's it's been the weirdest few weeks. Like he just said that he's not enjoyed training. He's not had that like motivation because he spent so long as an underdog and as like the hungry wolf that he's now being fed. He's, he's a bit like, meh. But I just found it absolutely crazy that someone of that level feels the same thing that, like, I'm pretty sure all of us have felt at certain yeah. points post prep, post success. I feel like if you've literally just like conquered the whole world, and fair enough, like he, he literally he cannot get any better. But obviously, I've got a lot of room to improve. Like, yes, I won the teens classes, I won the the teen Olympia. But I also went into the men's short class in Olympia and got absolutely scudded. Like everyone was scurried. Uh, yeah, scudded. 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 Yeah. Rinsed. Yeah. Scudded. Destroyed. Yeah. Exactly. Like everyone was massive compared to me. I looked like a little small child. Conditioning shape's gonna get you so far and like if everything comes together very well, peaks pretty much perfectly, pretty much like how it happened at the heart of England, because I was against big Elliot, Elliot Gibson. Yeah. Obviously, he's a big boy. He's significantly bigger than me. Um, but like everything kind of clicked pretty much perfectly that day. Um, yeah. But even if everything did click perfectly, if I say went to the WNBF Worlds and went into the amateur class and went against the, the men's short class, I would have again got absolutely rinsed. So I know that I need to be better and be a lot bigger. So it's like straight away getting to work for that. I can obviously understand with buddy Ryan Terry, who is literally just like, he's got nowhere else to, to go. And he obviously he needs to improve as well and continue to get better. But like, I know that I've got so long to kind of improve. And again, like just with natural bodybuilding in general, I know that I've like over time, I'm going to get better. And natural bodybuilding is once again, a long game. And you need to just, be kind of staying consistent like obviously i'm not in that same mindset of prep where it's like everything needs to be absolutely one million percent spot on like i'm having a, an off-plan meal per week um and enjoying some food every now and again and if i don't know i can see that hang, face. hang on hang on are you telling me mate that you're not all in yeah i know uh, it's shocking isn't it dan dan get him off the team dan, get Tom. him off <laughs> Tom, you can't talk mate i you're, had you're, no... you're toesing that's it off off plan yeah. meals what Come on, who, who does that? If you make your off-plan meals on plan, then it's never an off-plan meal. That's that's Tom Stocks on logic. I had a tub of ice cream today. <laughs> He's a genius. Did you actually? No. Name? It's uh, right. Aldi. Go to I Aldi. Get the gooey. Get the chocolate brownie ice cream. Uh, no. Oh, I thought no. you were about to hit with the mint chocolate chip one. That is ridiculously what, good. Is that an Aldi? Either Aldi or Lidl. Someone. I think it's Lidl then. But yeah, it might be one of them is ridiculous. I've tried the, the chocolate gooey one, it's all right, but this mint chocolate chip one is just levels. Mm, oh. How often do you have them? <sighs> With every meal. <laughs> yes. Uh, My man. <laughs> Off season. Um, Tom just made a new best mate. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> on a rest day, um, on my final meal, if I'm feeling it, I'll just match macros. To the meal instead of being like meal plan because i do meal plan like but it's 
my own meal plan. It's not like Finn tells me what to eat and I'll eat it. It's he sets me the macros, I'll put it into the meal plan sheet. He gives it the green light and then I just eat that every day. But on rest days, like if I want to switch up a little bit for my final meal, like I've got a good amount of food in that last meal. I think it's around like about 120 carbs, like 50-ish protein, 20 fat. So I can play about with some stuff and that, um, that little ice cream to be coming in clutch sometimes. <laughs> I like it. What's your, what's your, what is your favourite off-plan meal? I don't know. I do proper like a five, guys. Um, however... Also, a Neapolitan pizza. See, like a proper, like, like authentic pizza, like, like Italian pizza, like a stone baked one or something. Yeah, thin crust. Mm. Yeah, mm. I like that. Krogan just likes antipasti or whatever it's called. Spaghetti, what is that? spaghetti bolognese as a starter. Yeah, hey, yeah. yeah. Spaghetti. Oh, by starter. the way, by the way, I've had conversations with other people, and they agreed, agreed with me. I guess. What? I don't- is. What is antipasti? I always see it on Italian menus, and I don't know what it is. It's like it's like your pasta course. It's you have like Maybe. spaghetti bolognese as a as a starter as a course. Yeah. All oh, right. Okay. Right, Tom. What were people saying about me? I need to defend myself. They just said it was getting like spag bar was a bit of a start. It was a bit weird. That's all. Right. Okay. People that are listening, I'm going to ask you to just look in your wallets. And I want you to look for a WMBF Pro card. <laughs> <laughs> and if you've got one, I'm all ears. I'll have a conversation yeah. with you. But if you haven't... Anyone below that. Start having matter. spag ball as a course. Third place, yeah. Heart of England. Yeah. Yeah? Brilliant. Yeah. And where did Brilliant. you come, Josh? Heart of England. Second. No, 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 no. Mr. Crogan, where did you come in that show? <laughs> I came second, all right? I got yeah. feedback from Scottish twat. <laughs> I'm joking, oh, Chris. Right. I love you, bro. I got the Scottish. <laughs> it's all right. I beat, him. I beat him the week after and then the week after that. So it's all good. Yeah. And then I beat him as well recently, according to the judges' scorecards. I beat so him, and then he beat me again. So we're, we're we're all just we're all just back and forth, just having it out with each other. I feel like I feel like the men's physique category, natural bodybuilding, mate. It's we're, we're all just you know just having it out. It's just the Whatever. same people in it week after week, yeah. literally. <clears throat> so, Mister Campbell, I have a question. It's an important mm-hmm. question. Mm-hmm. Will we be seeing you at the Arnold Expo? Oh, I'm are you just going as a spectator? Yes. I'm thinking of going as a spectator. Mm. Yeah, me too. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And another subject yeah. to talk about, guys, to save me. Okay. <laughs> question. I got a question for Josh. Right, okay, go. Mr. 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 Olympia, not Mr. World, Mr. Olympia, right? The better Josh. Um what is the what's the weirdest thing you did on prep? Like weirdest habit or that you can remember? Is that a shit question? A, no, no, yeah, that's a weirdest thing. I had a real like you know whippist. Whip, mm. no, whippist, whippist. Whip. You know about that? Whippist. whippist. <laughs> yeah, he's always slag me for saying it like as if it's the one word because of my accent. Whippist, getting that in the freezer. Like that, that was just sex. Nice. Sex? Sex? Yeah. Josh, you're not 19. Up... You're not yeah. allowed to talk about that. Like, no. put it in the freezer, let it set, kind of, make a hole in yes. it, put it back in the freezer, pull it yes. out. Then sex. have sex with the baby. <laughs> exactly. That, that was a that prep hack, you know? Um, <laughs> and. and... <laughs> <laughs> But no, whey paste, free, freezer whey paste is phenomenal. Or was phenomenal. I can't look at it anymore. The thought of eating whey paste, like, sickens me. Because I had it so much on prep. Like, ugh, can't do it anymore. Is there any meals that you that you had on prep that you can't have anymore? I can't do the whey paste anymore. I can't do um, post-workout. I used to blend water, ice, and whey. And it was, like, so voluminous because I was obviously starving at the time and putting that over the cereal. But there, it was literally just like a big bucket of cereal in like this way because there was so much volume in it. Couldn't have that now. I'd shit myself. Um, <laughs> and 
what else? I've still got the same pre meal, which is the wrapping chips, um, air fryer chips, bussing, very nice. And I think that's it. I've, I've made, just got made, an air fryer. Made what? her so good, didn't they? I've just got an air fryer. What one is they it? They are pretty cool. Yeah, what one? Um, Ninja. It's got two compartments. Nice. Well done. Well done. Bougie. I, I, I didn't get it. My my lovely girlfriend's grandmother <laughs> bought it for us. She obviously oh, thinks you know, that my, my prep could have been better. So we've gone. We've, we've got an air fryer. You need to be more optimal. Yeah. Have you used it yet, Lena? Have I used it? Yeah, use it like every other day. Mm-hmm. It's good. Chicken it's, in mate, it. You end up like once you like start experimenting with it, you, you end up just cooking everything in it, man. Yeah, really? It's, it's, yeah. It's like so much easier as well. Though, like instead of sitting over a pan and cooking chicken, like you just put it in the air fryer, walk away, do shit around the house, come back to it, maybe flip it in the middle, and then come back and it's cooked. Nice. So your your like air fryer speciality is chips. Oh yeah! If anyone's listened to this and they want, to, are you ready for Hope this? Oh, they chat? are. Sure. Yeah, I know. That'd be good. Um, but <laughs> stay of you laughing at that. It's shocking. If you're laughing, he's a joke. Um, but no, the air fryer chips. If someone wants to go onto my Instagram, go onto the real section, go down. You'll see a full like three, four minute long air fryer chip tutorial. <laughs> is it? Is it potatoes? Cooked <laughs> air fryer. Yeah. Potato air fryer, eighteen minutes done. It's me somewhere waffling for three minutes. I like it. And there's also one on how to make like the wrapping chips and plate it all up, and you know, make it all all bougie and nice. So Ooh. if you want to be Mr. Olympia, you've got yeah, to follow you, that tutorial. You literally just need to eat wrapping chips. I have a question to ask about the Olympia, and I wanted to ask you on the podcast rather mm. than like you know just in conversation. Yeah. What was the standard like overall? Was it was it of that of the pinnacle? No, really, it's not. Um, uh, what would you compare it to? Right, so it's hard to say. Like, I don't. I think I can just speak openly, pretty much, because I am BP and B. Like, I don't really mind if they hear it, and I'm not slating them, but like. WMBF when it gets to an international level definitely significantly better. I really like the UK DFB like in the UK so like UK DFB WMBF and BNBF <clears throat> BNBF WMBF and UK DFB <laughs> I proper like like I enjoy them sorry you know but um, BNBF yeah, his voice yeah. just dropped he's <laughs> eighteen <now. laughs> really? um, live on air. <laughs> The UK DFBA, like, standard is really high. It's good in the UK. But then they feed into the INBA, PMBA. And it's as if it literally goes from, like, great standard in the UK, then the INBA, PMBA, goes downwards. Whereas with the WNBF, you go to Europe and there's all these German guys and they're terrifying. The standard goes another level. Yeah, like, that uh, Benjamin Schuster and there's Dirk, there's... So many guys that are just ridiculous. Like, see those that kind of area of Europe. You're just like, and they all compete in oh, WNBF. So, I'll be going WNBF international route for next season, definitely. Oh, Natural NBA. So, so, hang on. Are you WNBF pro? No. Me? No, no. Okay. I never, I never got my NBA PNB pro card as well. I was one place and off in an overall in the Romania show. I done the teens class and the juniors. The teens class in Romania was horrific. It was two guys. They looked as if they were in like their mid thirties. I think they were from like Lebanon or something. Like they they had full grown beards and everything, but they didn't know any English. So they were calling out poses and they just like weren't really posing. And it was like me and them, and I was like, this is this is bad. But then I went into the juniors class. Um, there was a boy or a guy David who I'd competed with a few times. He was competing, he was from the UK, Tim Stewart's client, and then there was a guy from Hungary, I think, he was there, and he's got really good shape, really good structure, so I came third in the juniors class. At that Romania show, I was super flat though, 
really really flat because i ended up doing like kind of just like too much exploring and stuff or wasn't necessarily exploring like we went to a big massive spa place in romania it's like really well known um but it was like a 50 minute drive away and like to get there it was just a bit of a hassle and then doing the food shop and like the shop that we went to was literally like i can't even describe how big it was we walked up and down i must have got like a good like seven thousand steps just trying to get the essentials and that like flattened my legs out yeah pretty pretty badly um and then when it came to the show, like I tried to eat a bit more in the day, like Finn was like, let's add in some foods, but it didn't do too much. So I was very flat. And then I ate a little bit more between the juniors and the overall. So I came third in the juniors. Um, David came second, this guy from Hungary came first. And then we went into the overall. So obviously from the teens class, I was in the overall. And then um, I beat the junior that won the junior class because like I'd just like filled up a little bit more and started to come life come to life a little bit more. Um, because usually like once I get posed and I've been up on stage for a while, like I've got like veins and everything like popping out my quads and stuff. Like I get very vascular and like kind of get switched on, but that never happens. Like even though my teens class and my juniors class was back to back, I was posing for like a good while. Um, like I never kind of started to like actually just look any better on stage which i usually do a lot more um but then for the overall i did look quite a good bit better beat the junior and then came fifth in the overall top fours got the pro cards um and that richard marks he came second he should have came first um he's adam powell's client the guy that won the uk dfba oh film. he's ridiculous yeah very good i don't know how the guy well i do know how the guy beat him that won because it was Romanian, so it was a Romanian show, mm. and they got the Romanian guy to win. Like, Just a script. spot of politics doing its bit, yeah, hmm. you know, as it always does. But yeah, I was one place away from that pro card there, and I'm happy I didn't get it to be honest. Because again, it means that, uh, uh, like, I, not that I'm not going to say like I didn't deserve it. Like the the top four was definitely better than me. But even if I did kind of deserve it, if I'd got that, I would have been kind of more satisfied. And again, I'm, I'm still hungry yeah. to get some form of pro card, so I'm glad I didn't get it. I, th I think it's a good thing that you've not got your pro card because it's something to work towards. It is a goal that that you can, like, even, even if, I know you're a pretty motivated guy, but even if you had a period of time where it dropped a little bit, you can pick yourself back up knowing that you're working towards that bigger yeah. goal. Like Mr. Stockton, for instance, he's got that to aim for. Mate, I'm loving it. It's like is this is this is it. It's like sometimes the jur the the journey is more fun than the destination. It's like you know when you get there, it's like oh, now what? If you're giving it too easily, you're not going to appreciate it as much. If you put in all this fucking effort just to get there, and you imagine that feeling when you like finally get it. You know, that's what you've just kind of like got to hold on to and just get after. And that's exactly what I'm doing. So give me the losses. I'll take them. You know, this guy wants it. Maybe not too many more. I won't, I, won't, I won't take too many. Maybe like one more. One more. One, yeah. one more. Big loss. <laughs> Against Mr. Krogan. We'll On see. the pro stage. Yeah, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll accept that, to be fair. Be fine. So, Josh, Mr. Campbell, what is the uh, what is the plan for this offseason now? Get where, are you at? Where, are you at? where are you at right now? What's the plan moving forward? Well, Weight-wise, I'm sitting at 71 kg. I am 10 weeks post prep now so i finished on the natural olympia stage i was 66.5 in the morning like we pushed fullness a good bit more but realistically throughout the season like my body was just fatigued we added in more food i wasn't getting any fresher ended up just being heavier but not necessarily a lot better but that was 66.5 kg i'm now 71 so that's what four and a half five kg Jesus. So within the 10 weeks um and it's went on pretty well like my face like he's he's can i don't mind when when you say like my face has like chubbier now and it's like the the fats went to my cheeks both my cheeks and my my butt cheeks like that's where the majority, yeah that's where the majority of the fats went to like i'm still holding somewhat decent condition but i think it's just like hormones and stuff like the, a lot of the weights went to my my face and then obviously when you get shredded glutes seeing them go away you're like that's weird and you feel fat because you've not got shredded glutes anymore, but like realistically, that's not normal. Um, but yeah, 71 kg just now. Performance is going well, going in the right direction. I've been ill twice, 
post prep and I wasn't ill at all the whole time. I, I think I was ill for like one or two days or only like two weeks away from the Olympia. But I think I think you're about to say that it happened to it's you. It's a possibly. pattern. It happened to yeah. me. It happened it's to Josh. Massive, it's definitely a thing. Yeah, that massive stress drop off your body like relaxes a little bit. It gets a little bit more kind of vulnerable. You bang. Mm. You're just slapped with an illness um, because you just got that stress drop off. But that's happened twice. So like. Two out of those ten weeks, I've been absolutely floored, like zombified. Um, but everything's starting to pick up again, feeling better. Goal this year is to get kind of like low eightyish kg. So we're looking at about one point five kg rate of gain per month at the moment. That's looking at kind of like one point five percent of my body weight per month. Finn was saying like pretty much just because of like my age and my training age, I can afford to gain weight a little bit quicker because I'm going to grow a little bit more from it. Um, so we're pushing weight a decent bit this year. Um, the only thing is like I started prep pretty lean. I started at 73 kg. We wanted to start heavier, but I couldn't because I had a lot of digestive issues. I pretty much got like diagnosed with IBS um, and I couldn't push carbs up past 650. Otherwise, like it was just like horrific. Um so yeah, we'll see what happens. My carbs are at five fifty just now, and I'm still starving, and food's going down well. Um, and I think a lot of it from before prep, like, was just me eating different foods pretty much every day, and not having like a very good structure with it, not dealing with my stress very well, and being quite anxious, like, about being anxious about foods. Like I was worrying about worrying, um, and thinking, oh, what if this meal doesn't sit very well, and then it would go boom. But I've got a much better kind of mindset towards it all now. So I think I'll be good and we can push up past A then 2025, like end of 2025 before we go into a pre prep diet. Um, I want to be 200 pounds. Nine, 91 kg. Just a, 200 just a big, pounds. I'm looking at Josh blocker. Gamble. Uh, not fit through doors. That's the goal. Bloody hell, mate. You're going to have to be a lot bigger than 200 pounds. I'm 200 pounds now and uh, I can get through doors easy. What height are you? <laughs> One seven seven centimeters. What is that in foot? Like five, five ten, eight? like five six, I think something like that. Yeah, five, five, five four, five four. Josh five, Cogan. Yeah, five four. Yeah, yeah. You yeah, 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 yeah. Do you know the other day, right, Josh? You obviously weren't there, but we had a an all in team shoe, and at the end of it, we we're like handing his clothes back or like deciding what we're keeping or whatever. And I took off the jumper, and and Dan was like, "Oh, what size have you got?" I was like, "It's a large." And then I looked, I was like, shit, it's a medium. <laughs> medium. I'm getting smaller. Fatter and smaller. Yeah. yeah. Well, Welcome that's to my world. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I want to be want to be big and strong. That's the goal. Big and strong. What would you biggest number one piece of advice for a 16 to 18 year old that is looking to get because at that age a lot of people are getting into bodybuilding. Yeah, this piece of advice be to them. I think the biggest thing would just be there's a couple of things like I think they're all just as important as each other, like structure, routine, consistency, train really fucking hard. Like a lot of people at that age don't have much con- like like kind of idea of where true failure is. Like as I said, it starts to get hard. Their breathing goes all over the place. They get very panicky because it becomes uncomfortable and they don't train very hard. They then overthink about, let me line up this single arm cable lap pull down so it biases the iliac lap when I do it. Like, not that that's a bad thing, but they're doing that, I don't know, before they even train hard. It's like nail that first, become very, very kind of accurate and train very hard in the gym um then consistency structure and routine biggest thing for that like when i was trying to get down a lot of foods i would be eating meals at like one two in the morning and people think like oh yeah like look at me i'm eating meals at one two in the morning you, you feel cool for it but realistically like your structure and your routines all over the place you're very inconsistent with your foods um you've got no structure routines your life in general in terms of like your sleep and wake up times so you've got no structure to anything if you can't go to sleep and wake up at a similar time each day you, you cannot have anything, any structure, because that's like the building blocks of it. So be more consistent with that. Stop scrolling on TikTok at 3, 4 a.m. in the morning, waking up at 12 in the afternoon. Uh, like when you get a, a school holiday, like stop waking up at 1 p.m. in the afternoon, like stay within a routine, train at a similar time, get your meals in at a similar time each day, be consistent and progress will follow, I think. It's a pretty good answer that, mate. Thank you. I coach a lot of people within kind of a say 16 to 19 year old range um and a lot of the time when they come to me 
like food intake and everything is all over the place is so inconsistent but actually nailing down a routine and, and becoming just a little bit more just mature in general like that that's going to be your, your biggest thing yeah i feel i feel like for young guys as well, it's all about not making them fall out of fucking love with it, and it's so easy for that to happen because they yeah, see all it. they see all of this shit on Instagram. How many things they need to worry about? How, you need to do this. You need to do that, and it's like gets to the point where it just stresses them out, takes the fun away from actually just training hard and just being in there and just enjoying it. You know, chasing that perfectionism, which yeah. I feel like, especially over like last few years, has been like hounded at everyone. It's like. I've seen it so many I've seen it happen to clients. You know, I've seen clients even come from co I've seen people come from coaches who are, yes, very knowledgeable and like yes, they are now, you know, they know they need to be focused on this, focused on that, focused on that. But at the same time, it just stresses them out and it strips the fun away from it. So like when you're young, like just by training hard, eating well, having a good routine, as you said, you're gonna fucking grow. You're gonna you're gonna progress and like you're gonna enjoy it as well. And if you're enjoying it and just having a fucking great time, you're gonna wanna stick to it. You know, yeah. that's that's the main thing. Like, it's just that long term setting yourself up for long term success, enjoying the ride, and just giving it your all. You know, yeah. When, when did you start training, Josh? Just as I was turning sixteen properly, I think it was start of lockdown, twenty twenty. My brother bought some oh. um, like old rusty plates off some dodgy Polish guy, and then that was it. That's what mate. It's because like it was infused with like Polish genetics. Yeah. That's it. You say. <laughs> Mate, they've got they've actually just got like trend within their blood. Yeah, dodgy dumbbells or dodgy D ball. Hang, hang on, uh, this is a natural podcast. Like you've just stated that you've, state that that you've taken trend. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. Have you not seen his? Have you not seen his uh, reels? He's definitely ninety, bro. And uh, nineteen. Nineteen. Yeah, so. <laughs> Fifty <Yeah>. kg. <laughs> I should just do that one time. Um, Oh, so from the point of you starting training, at what point did you start working with a coach or Finn or both? Finn, your first coach, have you worked with anyone else before? Yes, so started training in 2020 and lockdown, done my own thing, just like learned from TikTok and stuff. It was like four sets of 12, like horrific and everything. Like just, it wasn't brilliant in terms of what I was doing, but again, it was fun. That got me into training. I was like, any, any progress, exactly. anything like that, I was like, brilliant um and then started to get a little bit more knowledge i done powerlifting when i was like i had my home gym so we built uh, a homemade squat rack it was so dodgy um it was two cement buckets or two buckets filled with cement and then there was like wooden poles coming out at one where there was, yes. there was like, them. yeah there was five of them so the first one being a big tall one second one being shorter third one being a little bit higher that was like the little slot for the squat and then fourth one that was a lot lower down, then there was one that was slightly higher than that, then that was the space for the, the bench. Um, when I was doing like barbell benching, then I had this really, really go for it. Two buckets of whey paste with wooden <laughs> beams stuck in them. That's what he's, he's put the whey paste in the freezer with some <laughs> with some big planks in, pulled it out, <laughs> squat rag. Yeah, there we oh, go, job done. Yeah, that was, I had that, and then we had a bench, like, my dad's really into the gym, or, like, always pretty much has been pretty fit, Um, so I was benching with him, and the bench snapped in half, then we put it together again with tie wraps, and we went from that, from there on, we bought, like, a wee shitty barbell that weighed, like, one kg, and I was, I ended up loading, like, 140 on it for squats and stuff, and the thing ended up just, like, bent like that. Then I also loaded, like, I think it was 90 kg and took all the plates off of the one side at the one time. <laughs> the bar, like, skiffed past my face and went into the wall. And there was, like, a, a hole in the wall, like, maybe three to five inches long of just, like, this barbell straight through it. Uh, that's when my dad had to watch me training for the next week because he didn't trust me. Um, but into the question itself, sorry, I got sidetracked. Um, I think when gyms opened back up again, that was September 2021. That's when I started working with a coach, Cruz, from my gym. Um, I knew him, I'd seen him kind of kicking about and stuff. And Duncan, one of my clients now, who's prepping for this year, he introduced me or told me about Cruz back then. We were in the sauna um, just chatting. First time I'd ever met him and he was telling me about him. So started coaching with Cruz and done like a, a diet so like a four-week diet 2,000 calories pulled off like seven eight kg because I was a wasn't a chunky boy but like 
I weighed 75 kg at the time. So like I'm lighter than I was two and a half years ago. Um, but like I was, I didn't hold as much muscle, obviously, and I was a good bit fatter. We had done a four week diet, then started gaining back upwards from there. And then I think it was June, 2022 or yeah, June, 2022 that I started working with Finn and like, I was still quite immature then. Like I was pure motivated to be like, right, I'm going to be one of Finn's best clients, but realistically for like a good six months, I would have been one of his shitter ones. Like I would have been nowhere near because I was very inconsistent. Um, like some sessions I would miss, I'd be very inconsistent with food intake and everything was a bit meh. Then Noah and I went down and travelled to see Finn in February 2023, realised like how much more I could be doing with social media, with training, with routine, like time management itself. And that's when everything clicked. That's when I was just on the ball with everything really started pushing social media more that's when everything started to kind of take off with that a little bit more as prep started um and that's when i started taking it really seriously but realistically like from maybe october 2022 onwards i was like kind of maybe if we say like 80 percent pretty much on the ball and then 80 percent bodybuilder yeah i was wow. not willing mate i'm 95 percent. yeah i'm 97 Shit. it changes uh, it changes daily though you know depending on how many off-plan meals i have all oh, right. Okay. okay. <laughs> no, but about uh, Finn, Finn's perspective, right? Like 17, 18 year old Josh inquiry form comes through. I want to be Mr. Olympia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, then yeah, next joke. But yeah. then it happens. Oh, oh, yeah. you put, you put natural Olympia, the pinnacle. Yeah. The, the pinnacle. <laughs> the pinnacle. Not to be That's mistaken the, by the, the natural Mr. Olympia title. They said that, you need to say like teen um natural Olympia winner or something. They said like you're not allowed to call yourself the teen Mr. Olympia. It's like we don't have rights to that or something. Was, uh... was it was it in Amer- it was in America, wasn't it? Yeah. It's, 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 it's an American story though. It's like, you know, like if you go say, Oh yeah, I'm gonna go horse riding. They go horseback riding. <laughs> it's like, no, you're not walking on the pavement, it's the sidewalk because you walk yeah. to the side. So yeah, there, I don't worry about it that. It was a weird place. Vegas was really cool, but the show itself was not brilliant. Like, uh, gonna wish I'd done the WNBF one, but not for next time. It's okay, mate. These things happen. You know, you can't make every Relax. single right decision. The point is that you will make better decisions further down the line. Exactly. Oh, just one when, second. When, when are the board shorts going on, Josh? That's my question. You need twenty twenty six, mate. Just run it. One, run it one up. day, brother. One day. Oh. Yeah, look that, at looks, that. that looks silver to me. It's beautiful. Is it? Nah, nah, okay. It's got, it's got a goldy to you. It's got, I hope the Wi Fi oh, still works. Where's yours? Where's all your yeah. stuff? We're on an adventure because I've got all mine in the one spot. So I was going to show everyone. Why, why are you both doing this to me? I've had a good day. I've had a You've good had a day. Good fun meal. I've had, <laughs> I might have to have another one in a minute then. Hey, he's, got a, he's got a trophy room. <laughs> Oh, Jesus. So, Ooh. this here, this big one. I'm trying to keep the camera on oh. it. No! <laughs> no, you're back. I think you're I've back. lost us. I think there's a delay now. No. <laughs> <laughs> there's a delay. Wi-Fi. <laughs> no, the Wi-Fi. The Wi-Fi. Uh, <laughs> the Wi-Fi. The wi- the wi- the wi- <laughs> the I can't wi- see you. <laughs> Right, guys, so we had some technical issues, um, but Tom's managed to fix it. Congratulations, Tom. You're an absolute wizard. Josh Campbell, would you like to tell the people where they can find you and what discount code they shouldn't use on the next Mm all-in release? So Josh C. Fit on Instagram, the next all-in release. I was going to say it's in three days and 13 hours, but this podcast will not be out with a second. Um, So the next podcast is out... Or no, sorry, the it's next safe. drop is, what, 26th of January, 8 a.m. And you people should use code Josh C. And if you don't like me, use code BSB15. <laughs> Give them the option. Yeah. Yeah. Fair, fair enough. Ring to it, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm. Tom, outro with the boy. Works with you as well. What's that? I'm saying, do you think Josh C works with other Josh C? Maybe it's a double. Oh. We're both Josh C. You, you two gonna have to, yeah, have to like split. You have to split your commission. Yeah. You're gonna have to split your order. I mean, like you know when. 
<laughs> there may do be you, confusion with that. Do you think we look a little bit similar as well? Really handsome. No, Mr. Campbell's way like you, you oh, Josh Crogan, you look a bit old now. Josh is Thanks. nice and use youthful. You Washed know. up. Thank you. Yeah. I am. Yeah. Thanks. All handsome guys on the podcast. Mr. Crogan just looks like a guy that's been nailing pints for the past six years, you know. <laughs> but anyway, people, Josh, Mr. C, Mr. Campbell, Mr. Olympia, Mr. T Natural Olympia, thank you very much for joining us. If you guys enjoyed this episode, thank give it a thumbs up, give it a follow, share it with your friends, do what you got to do. And other than that, we will catch you in the next one. Bye-bye. Bye. See you in a bit.